absolutely no question about it. It is the most anticipated game in the 41 year history of Austin Stadium here on the campus of the University of Oregon in Eugene. The Oregon Ducks, they feel they've got a statement to make today. And here come the Oregon Ducks before a sellout crowd and a crowd that has anticipated this game for a long, long time. Uh, SC won the toss and deferred, so they will take the ball to start the second half. They will kick it away to Oregon. Beaver will be the kicker. Brown and Crenshaw, the deep man for Oregon. Stewart normally is on the deep team to return, but because he's going to carry so much of a load with Jeremiah Johnson out, he will not return kicks today. This is Crenshaw, four-yard line. Crenshaw fumbles. SC has it. Just like that. Well, there is a start, of course, that Oregon absolutely did not want. And Mike Bellotti and everybody else talking about the fact they must take care of the football. Spit it up on the first offensive, not even the first offensive play, but on the team. Backup wide receiver Brad Walker caught this fumble. Crenshaw, a sophomore out of Southern California. This Oregon team is great when they don't turn the ball over and play perfectly on special teams. And that's his own player before Walker even gets there, causing that fumble. Very tough play, and that's Angel Brown causing that fumble. Washington will be the setback behind Sanchez. Ball at the 21-yard line. Sanchez going for it all right now, and it is almost intercepted. Getting a hand on that ball is Patrick Chung. Listen to the crowd. They are involved. Second down. This is Washington. Washington gets a little room down close to the 15-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about five and a late flag. And I think that may go, Oregon is suggesting that that's going against USC. Things seem to happen faster when the crowd is going wild here in Austin Stadium. When you're on that opposing team, there is a frantic nature in your heart when you listen to this. There's the foul on the Trojans. You make mistakes like that, you're going to see the late hit right here. And that's Shiloh Rashal. He's been injured. He's starting a game. That was a big plus for the Trojans having him back, but that is not a big plus. Though. Just a three-man rush and a screen this time. Plenty of room for McKnight at the 20. Trying to get outside 15, and he's going to be just short of the first down at about the 13-yard line. Fourth down and one. The Trojans will go. The last six fourth down attempts against this Oregon defense have failed. Big moment early in this game. Two tight ends, Davis and Thompson. Empty backfield. Give to McKnight. And McKnight is going to be stopped short. John Bacon makes the call. They brought McKnight on the reverse off the wing. And he is stopped short of the first down. That's Aliotti's defense stepping up in a big way. But very questionable call to run an end around when you have one yard to go for a guy that normally runs sideways as a young freshman. But Knight has got to find a way to get up field quickly on that play. And Seven straight stops on fourth down now for the Oregon Duck defense. Welcome back to Hudson Stadium. Oregon and USC were scoreless midway through the first period. Oregon will have it at the 28-yard line. This is Dixon on the keep. Gets it across the 30 to about the 32. Pick up a four. Makes great decisions. Over the middle this time. Catch is made by the tight end. This time it's Stewart at the right side. Takes a couple people with him. And gets something out of nothing. Pick up a three. Stewart again. And Stewart this time gets into the secondary for the first time. Gets to midfield. He's an absolute joy to watch. Right now, the way things have developed, you got a lot of good running backs in the Pac-10, but he is by far the best, in my opinion, just running with authority and speed every time he touches a football. One more time, Stewart. He's going to get the first down. And, and Oregon offensively, they say they feel they should score every possession. They said they're disappointed if they have to punt it away. Dixon straight back. Now he'll tuck it away and run. He'll get to the 40, inside the 40, to the 38, close to another Oregon first down. Well, Dixon, of course, guy who is a two-sport athlete, even though Oregon doesn't have a baseball team, he plays professional baseball in the Atlanta Braves organization. 
On track to graduate in three and a half years with a 3-4 grade point average. Only classes take years, billiards. I didn't know they offered that. Teaches you angles. And a catch made for a first down this time by Terrence Scott. So it'll be first down, and again, they go, as always, with a no huddle. And here's Dixon on a keeper, cuts it inside, gets inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. And I'll tell you, this, this is a thing of beauty to, to watch. It certainly is, just the misdirection and the way things are run and how they stretch, 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 and go upfield. That time, April Spicer catching up, and the Trojans not doing a bad job of getting to the quarterback and tackling Jonathan Stewart, but not before they gain big yards. And they're right back at the line of scrimmage, ready to run it out of play. Here's Dixon. He's going to get some room again. Goes out of bounds at about the 25. And this will tire you out. Look at the effort that Griffin's got to make just to get him out of bounds. And Dixon does not take the hit. He's in fantastic shape. He can do this all day. And USC's defense is getting tired. Third down and three. They give it to Stewart. Stewart first down and more. Lip breaks up. SC defender takes it all the way to the 11-yard line. What a great effort by Stewart. That time, Kerry Harris trying to get to the legs when you have a big, giant guy, and you see the beautiful zone that Oregon's running, just clearing everybody out. When you have a guy that big going upfield, and you're a corner like Kerry Harris, only 180 pounds, you try to get to his legs, but Stewart is just so fantastic on his feet. Made a 15, 11th play of the drive, the ball at the 11-yard line, first down. This is Crenshaw for the first time, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Stewart back in the ball game. This is Stewart inside the five, down to about the three yard line. Might have gotten to the two. Well, watch how he gets his shoulder pads facing toward the end zone. You see that? How he gets upfield and then just starts moving those big legs toward his goal. When you ever get those shoulder pads pointing in the right direction, good things happen. Third down and two. They have plenty of time because they don't hunt. This time, straight up the middle into the end zone goes Dixon. Great job of just pulling the USC linebackers, 58, Malaluga, biting on the fake. That's some of that undisciplined nature that DeMarco Farr was talking about before the game started. Malaluga is going to have to be more disciplined in this game and look at the offensive line as opposed to peeking in the backfield. That time, sucked away Dixon look at the beauty of this offense you're going to see Malaluga and Cedric Ellis both fooled by the fake from Dixon if you get those two guys out of the way then you're going to be in great shape they don't even bother blocking Cedric Ellis because of the confidence they have in Dixon's ability and Stewart's ability to fake with that football just a masterful play and the quarterback's untouched running right down the middle of the field Walter Thurman the third doing a great job of closing down. Watch it. He's got somebody to deal with there in Johnson, but Johnson not able to make any kind of block, and Thurman getting to the legs of Hazelton. Second down 11. Give this time to McKnight. McKnight's got a gap at midfield. Got one man to beat at the 30. Still on his feet. He's gone. And a flag is down. Flag is down back at the 42-yard line. to pass this time in trouble and down goes Sanchez and blowing in was Jerome Boyd. 